one of the, the reasons I'm doing this YouTube stuff is my friend Eric just, uh, suggested to me that I should take this on and when I first thought about it, oh, how hard can it be? Stand in front of the camera, you talk, you show a few bits and pieces you're doing, easy. When I started looking into it, suddenly it was hard, yes, but you need somewhere to hold the cameras and you need somewhere to, to and you need better lighting and all that sort of thing. So I've done the lighting, that's uh, relatively easy, but holding the cameras was difficult. So I've made up a couple of uh, camera brackets and I won't bore you with the uh, the cutting of tubes and welding those together, but in there I've incorporated a couple of captive screws and they're interesting things. So uh, I'll show you a little bit about captive screws and uh, then we'll um, run through the features of the, of the stands just to give you an idea about uh, why I've done what I've done. So when I talk about a captive screw, what am I talking about? Well, in simplest form, it's a, a, a screw, typically a hand screw, but they can have slots or crosses or whatever in them for, 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 uh, for driving uh, up into things. And you've got a threaded portion in the part that it's going through, and then you've got a, a thread on the top of the screw, and this is down at the, uh, the root diameter of the thread, the, the tapping drill size, plus a tiny bit of clearance, that sort of thing. So when that screw is hanging down, it can't actually fall out of the hole. You've actually got to physically unwind it to remove that screw, which means for something like a camera tripod, you can have that sitting there, you can bring the camera up and you can do up the screw and uh, you're fine, you undo it, and you don't have to worry about where the screw goes or anything like that. And that's very handy if you're looking at something where you're doing things up and taking things apart uh, frequently and you don't want to have to keep track of all the screws all the time. There are other ways of doing that um, these days. There are captive fasteners and all that sort of thing, but this is a very simple way. I have seen it done uh, occasionally with, instead of a, uh, a threaded portion here, that, that was sheet metal and too thin. And so what they had done was they actually put a small circlip on the shaft here, which was just big enough to stop that, that screw dropping through. In this particular case, we're just going to use a thread and a thread and we go from there. So. I've made my knurled knobs up for the uh, the bottom of the camera brackets. I've made some knurled knobs up for the side of the bracket to secure the angle. These are steel and these are aluminium. Uh, those are tapped quarter Whitworth. These are tapped M6 just to be awkward. The next thing I have to do is take the head off this Whitworth bolt so I can then shorten it. it, it sits around about there in the, in the hold assembly. The three jaw here, not a good idea for putting threaded parts in, particularly with these sorts of serrations on in the inside of the jaw. It can, if it's not clamped down securely, start winding or be winding in to the, to the chuck. And of course if you put enough pressure on there not to do that, the chances are you're going to deform the threads. So what I prefer for doing this sort of work is a collet chuck. So here we are with a collet chuck. This is uh, this takes an ER40 collet. And from memory I chose ER40 because I could get a little bit bigger diameter material in there. I think the ER32, which is the next size down, stops at around about 25 millimeters. And uh, the 40 range lets me hold inch stock, which is still available. They're not difficult to make. Um, basically a, a block that secures onto your spindle. That's a metric thread, 1.5 1, 1 pitch from, from memory. Uh, looks to be about 40 millimeters or thereabouts. The, the, the specifications are available online. And the inside there is just a, um, an 8 degree taper. The nuts you can buy from places like eBay as you can with the collets and it gives you a very simple compact way of, of clamping things, small things in particular, into the lathe. The nice thing about the ER collets, says you're doing out further, the nice thing about the ER collets is that I can also use them on the mill to hold tools in a, in a collet chuck on that, so it, 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 they do double duty. So here's a, here's a finished product. Uh, you can see in there the, the quarter Whitworth screw has been necked down over the thickness of the 
uh, bracket that it's going to go into, just leaving enough thread there to engage in the socket on the bottom of the camera. The camera sockets aren't all that deep, so that's only about 5mm long. To get to this, I just set up the thread in the chuck and used a parting blade to take that into pretty much the tapping drill size for the Whitworth thread, uh, which I think is 5.1mm or whatever the, uh, image, uh, the imperial equivalent is and then continue that down for the thickness of the bracket. You've got to be careful doing this because that bolt is flexible. Uh, it's probably not the best machine for steel for machining because why would you? They're rolled. So you just need to be careful doing that. But it's not it's not difficult. You just take it gently and, uh, and go from there. Whenever you're dealing with a cantilever, you need to have uh, a bit of stiffness. So I've got a nice big gusset in there. It's probably overkill. But what you've got to remember is when you weld aluminium, you, you're basically annealing it, uh, making it soft. And so it's a good idea to go overboard rather than uh, have it there and just have this thing sagging, bending, all the rest of it. Uh, up here, that's, that's a, a steel nut on a, on a piece of thread. Uh, aluminium is not terribly good for uh, threads going in and out, though they get chewed up eventually. So one way is to put a stud in there and then put a put a, scr a screw or a nut of some sort to, to hold it. Uh, and this this camera bracket is will basically sit on a piece of RHS. Uh, that gives me some angular adjustment that way, and I can tilt the camera that way so I can line it all up. Um, so that's that's one of them. The other bracket is a long extension piece. Similarly, I've got a, a stud going through um, from this piece of aluminium through a through a, the side of the bracket there onto a nut. Once again, captive nut down there. I've arranged this so that the centre of gravity of the camera is around about that pivot point. So I've, I haven't got enormous loads trying to, to push this thing down. Uh, a couple of bits of hollow section, that's hollow as well, as is that. And that's there to, to save weight. And down the bottom I've just got a, a plate with a quarter inch Whitworth thread tapped in it. Um, quarter inch Whitworth is, the, is basically the standard for camera threads. Uh, has been for, for decades. And so that, that'll just screw to the top of the tripod and that gives me an extra what, one and a half, two feet worth of height on the tripod, and so that's what uh, that's all about. Um, so, yes, welded aluminium, quite light, a bit of knurling, but um, yeah, captive captive screws, handy things to to know about. So that's a little bit about captive screws. Hopefully, that'll be uh, useful to to some of you out there. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, thanks to those who've inspired me and uh, taught me what I know.